everyone. Uh, I'm Anna uh, here in front of the SmartCat uh, today, uh, Nanad's replacement, and I have a wonderful guest, Dimitris. Today, uh, he comes from medicine and tech background, worked both in public and private sectors, and uh, he will share some of his experiences. I think in Greece, but also in uh, whole Europe, about uh, medicine and AI and how you combine it. Welcome, Dimitris. Uh, first, uh, I want to hear how do you like Belgrade, how do you like Data Science Conference, and how was your talk today? Hi, Anna, and thank you for uh, having me here today. I worked in Belgrade uh, for four years in 2003. Uh, so surprise, surprise, Belgrade is like a home to me. <laughs> uh, we love it. I uh, really enjoyed it here. We, uh, my work started basically in, in, Be in Belgrade in 2003, so whatever it is I do today and what I presented here um, in my keynote uh, started in Belgrade uh, 20 years ago, exactly 20 years ago, and uh, yes, it's a fantastic city, and we always, uh, my wife and my kids, we always look forward to come back here. Amazing, so so nice to hear it. I think maybe it's similar to, to your home country, there, there are some similarities, I would say. Well, look, I, I was born in Greece, uh, as you said a minute ago. I grew up in the United Kingdom, where I still work. Uh, and um, I, Belgrade, in many ways, is, is kind of a combination between uh, uh, East and West, as a lot of people here want to. So it combines a lot of characteristics, a lot of things uh, and habits I have from the United Kingdom, and a lot of habits and, and uh, things I learned from Greece. So uh, perhaps this is one of the reasons why it feels like a natural habitat for me. Amazing. And uh, what would you say, uh, as you have experience in UK also, uh, how um, important and how well known are, is technology here? Do you think it is widespread or we need to talk about it more? Oh, fantastic question, Anna. Um, well, look, um, we technology, it, de it depends on how you define technology. Technology was already known uh, in Belgrade and, and in Serbia um, 20 years ago. So uh, in terms of uh, how the definition of technology as a new way of doing things and innovation about improving the way that we, and healthcare is my field, so, you know, 20 years ago, and again in 2014, I worked with medical faculty, with the EU delegation, with Bartut, um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we, I was working with scientists and professionals that were very competent in making use of technology to improve healthcare, their healthcare uh, ecosystem. But if we, if we look at technology from the perspective of gadgets, uh, uh, from the perspective of tools mm -hmm. that we use, like the stethoscope, uh, uh, to, to, to bring a pedantic example uh, that everybody loves, then Belgrade wasn't as advanced mm. before. Um, and um, uh, when I use uh, the Belgrade instead of Serbia, I'm actually referring to a system I know best because this is where I worked. So, you know, we were supposed to look at the whole of country, but I, I knew the Belgrade ecosystem best. Um, I think that progress needed to be made. Now, in my opinion, also that progress is being made. Mm -hmm. um, I have left, I haven't worked here since 2015. Uh, what I know about um, um, healthcare and the current government is that this is a, a pro-innovation uh, government and this is fantastic news. Some very competent people are involved, uh, progress is made. So I would say um, that the country is most certainly in a very good path uh, and where it should be. Now, whether right. improvements can be made or not, of course, but this is always the case, right? Of course. Thank you. Uh, and you were mentioning um, your uh, work in healthcare. And since I was a bit investigating a bit about your background, um, you've actually uh, redirected to healthcare in your second master's uh, studies, right? The, the, yes and no. I will, I will answer your question. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to know what was the thing that inspires you what is the thing that inspires you about healthcare and how do you see the technology uh, helping there? Yes, thank you. I, 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 I sort of, you know, I smiled because of the way that you, uh, you, you, uh, you, know, you asked the question about redirecting. Um, it, it's true and it isn't. Basically, it's not. Look, I, the, the way I found the, <clears throat> excuse me, my way into uh, healthcare technology is, was for me a conscious design. Mm -hmm. So I, I designed the, the whole thing because I came from a medical family. 
Uh, and the idea was, uh, I was dead set on, on proving that there are ways in which we can clone uh, a good doctor. So, you know, uh, father was a role model for me. He was a su successful surgeon. So my idea was that, you know, why should there be only two, three, five, ten, I don't know, successful good surgeons that help patients? How can we clone them? So, you know, at the time, uh, the idea of public health wasn't very big. It became later on. So I was approaching public health through, through a, um, a technology discipline. That was in my mind. And we're talking now about 80s, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can imagine that this was a little bit advanced, but... The idea was there from the beginning. I wanted to go into technology. I wanted to use technology uh, to improve the ecosystem for decision making, for treating patients, to produce more patient centric mm -hmm. healthcare. And, you know, this is the uh, God honest truth. It may sound surprising, but this was the design from the very beginning. So clearly, I had to find the discipline in, a, in an academic institution. Um, uh, that would be for technology and, and computer um, engineering was and computer science was the only thing at the time that but then information engineering came along and it was like okay there we go this is a fantastic opportunity because it is about information in healthcare and so it was uh, I was lucky I think as well or is it luck or uh, you know so I had a conversation the other day with a friend of mine who said I don't believe in luck everything is a matter of design okay. now, it, it, it depends on how you see that yes. design but anyway this is how i found uh, myself in that course um, and um, my, my phd came along in artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and medicine so we're talking about the phd uh, in artificial intelligence and medicine that took place in early 1990s in yes you know, it's, it's actually pretty early uh, for, yeah, for yeah. the artificial so, intelligence so yes. What I'm saying is there was a design. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't um, change anything in in the course. I just used opportunities along the way. Uh -huh. Maybe you you should be a little bit lucky, smart and lucky for that. I would say. Well, look, uh, I, smart. Uh, considering yourself smart is a very dangerous habit. Uh, I think for anyone. I, I think that um, passion always uh, works uh, to our advantage. So when we're passionate about things, it's like our own little pocket God, you know, if I can use that expression, uh, always with us, always guiding us in the right direction. It's about passion. I, I think it's simple as that. You believe in something, it somehow comes along. So your passion came actually from your early childhood and watching your father being a surgeon, helping people? Yeah. Yeah, uh, either that or I, I didn't like the, the, the sight of blood and I realized I couldn't become a medical doctor myself. So I found the next be best thing. I don't know. I think it was... It's, it's, also, <laughs> it's also smart, actually. Yeah, that would be smart. Yeah, that would be really, really smart. Yes. Um, How to get away from family's pressures uh, to follow yeah. the profession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what would you say about... Uh, I, when I went through your CV, I saw that you worked both in public and private sector. What would you say, uh, which uh, setup suits you better? And where can you express yourself and uh, use uh, more of artificial intelligence use cases in healthcare? What is, uh, which sector is more open to innovations? Look, um, th this is a really tough question. Um, I don't think that you can possibly focus. There was a stage in my career where I, I would have chosen to answer the question for myself and I would have said private, public, or um, I don't think I, I have the luxury. I don't think I can answer that question any longer mm -hmm. in a practical way, in a way of making um, career choices or policy choices, choices how, how to navigate the space because from the beginning, I started my career with IBM. I was talking with, with, a, with an IBM just now uh, here from, from Serbia and uh, we were saying once an IBM, uh, always an IBM. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, you know, this is, uh, so, you know, the joke was uh, you're still wearing the blue suit. <laughs> uh, and yes, the truth is it, it probably came, the habit probably came from then. So what I'm trying to say is that you know, I was, I, I was the, in the private sector, in the corporate private sector. Yes. Um, it, it, it wouldn't work in the best possible, in the most optimal way. I, I went through academia, I, that didn't work in the most optimal way. Now I'm a health exec in residence at UCL Global Business School for Health. It's a fantastic uh, environment and team and, and contribution to the sector and quite unique globally in the sense that we're talking about a global business school for health. Um, and and uh, 
for me, it's, it's, it's an adjuvant, it's, it's an assistance in, in reaching your goal. I think it's a, my field, the way it is now, is a multidisciplinary effort. Mm -hmm. And um, perhaps the most likely environment, if one were to choose a chair or a hat and, and uh, only use that to forward one's goals, uh, would have to be in policy making. Uh, and policy making is government. But yes. I don't think that government uh, is ready to actually you know, pursue the goals that we need to pursue to, to create social innovation in healthcare. Yes, because um, probably it's a um, slow process in the government and such big... Uh, it's politics, it's yeah. the way the world works. So it's about tangible results and yes. delaying the, um, uh, the, 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 in a, the things that cannot be done until an opportune time comes for the... It, it's the way that the system works. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, for now, I'm going to stay with, with this situation. I'm, you know, um, founder and uh, executive director of uh, the uh, Global Health and Digital Innovation Foundation in the United Kingdom. It was established to bring together people who have experience from global health, international development, patient safety, technology, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, innovation. We have a fantastic team of advisors, and I'm really happy uh, with, with that environment. So advocacy is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to, we're a non-profit. It means, you know, we, are, we, we know we're not going to make money out of this. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to influence people, share their knowledge uh, and, and get, um, get the attention of, of those decision makers, whether that's private or public sector, um, to create impact, to mm -hmm. steer things in a direction that will benefit patients uh, from larger populations. There are a lot of patients out there uh, that are underserved and underrepresented. Yes. And I would really like to see that change. And uh, last question, um, what is the region you're maybe, are you focusing on some region specifically? Because um, I've heard and had some experience uh, working with startups who are focusing on healthcare in Africa and the situation there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's maybe, uh, I'm not sure you're probably, uh, you're surely more informed, but it's maybe the continent where it is currently needed the most. Well, yes, uh, that as well as other. So, as I said earlier, um, timing is very important. Or oh, that was my previous conversation, I think, before, <laughs> before our, um, yeah, with, with the gentleman we were talking to before. Uh, I think the timing is very important. And, and Africa is where things are happening for a number of reasons. One of them uh, is, uh, I truly believe, and my, my keynote today was about telehealth, about remote care, about hospital mm -hmm. at home. So there's an opportunity in Africa, there's a need uh, to reach uh, the scale and scope of service provision needed globally, but to demonstrate the results yes. um, and, and serve uh, patient communities that are underserved and underrepresented in our current evidence systems. So there's a lot of things that, that point in that direction. And I think it's also a good thing because we can demonstrate results in a jurisdiction in a, in a part of the world where it, the result, those results are really um, needed. And plus, yeah. plus, look, I mean, COVID-19 um, indicated uh, um, globalization from another perspective, not mm -hmm. the perspective of money making or business or um, creating uh, larger markets, but uh, the perspective of uh, needing to work together, collaborate um, and accelerate progress so that we can address uh, our risks um, um, and complexity that we cause with technology, mm -hmm. with the technology itself. Because that's a massive predicament. If we don't overcome that problem, that pace uh, asymmetry, then uh, we're not going to be able to recover from the situation we put ourselves in. So this is a very good opportunity for us to prove that we can do it. And um, certainly our hopes are high in Africa. To, to uh, We're waiting to see what's, what's going to happen there. A lot of investments uh, are yes. taking place uh, from the industry, from government. Um, to accelerate the uptake of uh, mobile health and digital technologies mm -hmm. in general. So connectivity, which is really important. Um, so yes, I mean, uh, it is a good opportunity for, for impact, to demonstrate yes. how we can go forward. But there are notable efforts in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a project uh, in the United States which is being designed now. Um, um, we're hoping that we're going to be successful in, 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 in moving, moving this forward. Um, yeah, so let's see. Great. A lot of innovations, a lot of opportunities, a lot to be done. But yeah. I suppose a lot is already done. Now we need the luck you mentioned a minute yeah. ago. <laughs>
So wishes good luck. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Dimitris, for your time Thank and you, for interesting mm -hmm. talk today. It was a pleasure meeting you and thank you for hosting this conversation. Thank you. Pleasure. You too.